I'm going to demonstrate uh, a mount for a lynx skull. This is the classic design of the post in the ear and one in the jaw. I can't tell which way I went on that. We'll see. Looks like it goes like this. Okay. So I want to make one of these real quick for you. Um, once you put the uh, shrink wrap tubing over it, it's gonna it, that shrink wrap tubing will be thicker than your wire, and so things will fit tighter. So you need when you're designing this, you need to take that into account. That uh, if your mount rod barely fits in, then uh, once you have the shrink wrap on, it may be too thick to go into the hole. I've cut a little tab. That's going to be uh, the tab for the rod. The rod is maybe three eighths or an eighth inch. I mean, uh, or a half inch longer, so it, it goes goes down in. You, you draw a hole in your uh, in your exhibit wall or whatever you're mounting that to so that that rod goes down in there and then the uh, that screws in to keep it uh, stabilized keep it from twisting oh yes i want to uh, grind a little notch in my tab to fit the rod so that you have a a good uh, uh, close contact on all your contours uh, for the the solder to make a solid joint. The solder will not jump the gap in the air. And so I made the tab for the rod, okay? But before I solder it on, I want to drill the, the hole for the uh, set screw. Okay, that's the hole for the for the uh, screw. So I'm just using a, a little bit larger uh, drill bit to just sort of gouge out a countersink for the, for the the top of the screw is kind of tapered. You want the screw to, to fit flat down into the piece. Yeah, it'd be hard grabbing hold of it. What you might do is to drill it first and then cut around it. The next thing we want to do is to uh, is to do the, the top piece. And what I've done is um, I tapered that on the grinding wheel and with the file and sandpaper or whatever. And then I'm going to want to bend that around. This is narrow enough, that this rod, I can bend that by hand. Uh, if you have something really precise that you're trying to do, you can... Uh, if you have a really sharp bend or something that you want to do, you can heat it with the torch and bend it. So I'm giving it a little, a, bit, a little bit of a curve to curve up under his palate. Uh, 
I put a bit of a dimple in there. Okay, make sure you have your orientation correct. <clears throat> I have three different soldering points that I'm doing and um, it's possible if, if you have two different parts close to each other that you can undo the first one when you're trying to solder on the second one, right? right. And so um, that's why we have solders that melt at different temperatures. So you start with the highest melting point solder in this, our case it's medium and for our we have a medium and an easy flow it would be to cut off a, a small piece of solder I usually flux my solder before I go cutting it the solder flows towards the heat okay it'll flow uphill if it's hotter uphill and um, I have a, a small piece of uh, sheet here and a big chunk of rod there and <clears throat> which one is going to heat up first if I heat them if I heat them equally you know at the same time they're the same flame yeah so the smaller piece will heat up quicker and that solder will jump over to the small piece and uh, and then you need your little pick to shove it back where it, you want it to go so what you want to do is to heat up the larger piece first and you're raising the brass up to this 12, 1400 degrees, whatever it is, 1360 degrees. You're raising your piece of metal, your project, up to that melting temperature and that conducts the heat to the solder. You're not melting the solder on like so much glue on top of a cold piece of metal. Yep. This is matte gas. I don't know what matte stands for, but it's really hot. It's a lot hotter, hotter than uh, propane, and I like it for this kind of work. And you've got a torch that uh, has an adjustable, uh, it's adjustable output, and then a striker to um, a, a, a magneto to, to light it. I'm going to heat the rod first, it's all, it's all fluxed, I have the solder in place, I have my solder poker ready. So the flux is a protective holding that uh, keeps oxidation away from the, from the project, from the solder. So you can see the flux going through its changes. It's not ready, the solder isn't ready to flow until that flux is like water. The solder won't flow to an area that, that uh, is oxidized, it's corroded. If, you, if you're dealing with some old metal, you might want to uh, steel wall or sand it down to get some bright metal. And you can see the solder starting to melt. can't tell whether it uh, actually got into my joint. It's acting like the, the rod isn't hot enough. It's, it's melting onto the sheet before it goes onto the rod, so I need to keep the rod a little more. And there, it mostly went on. So you could see there was a melting, it melted and then it flowed. To uh, get the flux off, if you let it air cool, uh, the flux will create a glaze on there. It'll be just like a pottery glaze, a clear glaze that's hot. Uh, and it won't come off. You can file it and grind it, and it's, it's like trying to grind the glaze off of a pot. 
by you stick it in some hot water and it dissolves it. What am I doing? What are the steps here? Flux. Flux to everything. Keep everyone first. You might be able to see it, see it glow red. That's, that's about the time you're ready to solder is when things are starting to glow. That was enough solder, it'll flow all the way around the whole joint. I glopped it on one side and the heat sucked it around, sort of capillary action. <clears throat> 